Good morning, students. Welcome to the virtual classroom. In our previous lecture, we were discussing the general characteristics of the group number 16. We discussed the two of the chemical properties. The next one, specifically the reaction, specific within elements. The chemical properties now we will be taking here. We are having it as a chemical properties in which now we are going to discuss about the specific elements how they are reacting with the uh, particular elements of the group number 16 right so here we will take it as reactivity with hydrogen see still now we discuss about the general on common now we are doing it for specific elements that means all these elements of the group number 16 how they are going to react with hydrogen so in that case hydrogen is having one valency oxygen or the elements of the group number 16 are having valency 2 so that means the reactivity towards the hydrogen they are going to form it as E or oh, sorry H2E right they are going to form it the compound in the form of H2E where E is O S S E T. I am not going to include PO in it. The reason is PO is a radioactive component. The reactivity of that PO element cannot be discussed. Right? So we are not going to discuss anything related to the radioactive components. Here, when we are having H2E, so that means two hydrogen molecules are going to combine. Now, in that case, when this I am writing it, I will write it as H2O to H2 T top to bottom, right? Tendency to form hydrogen bond decreases. Tendency to form hydrogen bond decreases. Now, because of the decrease in the tendency to form the hydrogen bond, right? What will happen? The acidic character of these compound is going to increase. Acidic character of the compound is going to increase from H2 to H2 to E. That means the order we are going to get that H2 is less acidic than H2S. H2S H2 T the, the order of sequence we are going to get it as acidic character increases from top to bottom or bottom because of the absence of hydrogen bond. As well as you can see that thermal stability it's going to decrease. Now what is the thermal stability? As the bond can be broken out very easily, hydrogen can be separated from the compound very easily. Its tendency to break the bond, the holding the energy, heat energy, it's decreased. So that is the reason why we say that thermal stability decreases from O2 T. It decreases from O2 T. Right? So that is for the reaction with hydrogen. Okay, the next one we are having it as a reactivity with oxygen. Uh, now, I don't think this reactor, I just stop for a moment. The reason was when I was trying to go for the oxygen. Before that, I wanted to tell you that I am discussing about the oxygen group. It's an oxygen family itself, right? So oxygen is going to react with cell itself to form an oxygen molecule. Then we know it. But at the same time, oxygen reacts with its third molecule also to produce ozone. Oxygen reacts with oxygen to form So that is the one component that is going to be produced by oxygen. But at the same time, 
when we are discussing about the oxygen that is reacting with the rest of the elements, it is going to form with the rest of the elements. That is S S T. It produces two types of oxides. It produces EO2 and EO3. Where E means S S T. Right? So it is going to produce two types of compounds. EO2 and EO3. Whereas oxygen itself forms O3. Right? So these two components, when we are talking about it, their properties, they are going to show us that sulfur to thallium, we are going to get it as reducing property. Reducing property, it decreases from S to T. The reason is, sulfur can very easily go for plus 6. It has a tendency to go for plus 6. While plus 6 oxidation state of thallium is, the stability is decreasing. So its reducing property decreases from S to T. Right? Now, SO2 is a SO2 has a reducing property. Why? We will be having an SO3 has a Now what is the reason for it? When you take it as an SO2, sulfur is with plus 4. For SO3, sulfur is with a plus 6. So plus 6 it cannot exceed. It cannot go. So it goes for oxidizing property. Right? It reduces itself. While this component has a tendency to go to the plus 6, so it has a reducing property also. Actually, SO2 has a reducing as well as oxidizing property both. It can go for 0, it can go for minus 2, it can go for this also. So that means it can act as an oxidizing as well as reducing agent, while SO3 can act only as an oxi or this oxidizing agent. Right? is a specific depending these all the properties of the compound they are mainly depending upon their oxidation state and the last factor that we are having it these elements when they are combining with the oxygen they are forming their oxides which are acidic in nature all the oxides All the oxides are acidic in nature. Right? So, why? Oxygen, it reacts with non metals and they form oxides which, when dissolved in water, they get converted into acidic compounds. And so, we can say that all these are acidic in nature. They don't have a difference in their oxidation states. Right? Though their oxidation state differs, their acidic character does not change if they remain acidic only. Okay, next reaction with halogens. Now, when we are talking about the reaction with halogens, already a moment ago we discussed with oxygen reacts with. Halogen to form OF2. It's only the component that is formed by the oxygen. Right? As in with the oxygen with a plus oxidation state. In the rest of the elements that are formed with the halogen, the oxygen will be in the minus oxidation state. Halogens will be in the plus oxidation states. So this is only the component where oxygen is plus 2 with rest of the halogens it is going to form 
minus two oxidation state. Right? Now, the factor that we are getting is stability. Stability of oxides with halogens. It decreases from F2 I. The stability is going to decrease from F2 I. That means the stability we are going to get it with, with the oxygens. Right? Another factor of the halogen. Sulfur forms only SF6 as highly stable. There is only the component that is going to produce hexafluoride as a highly stable. None of the other elements of the same group can form hexafluorides. Six fluorine atoms to be attached with it. Right? It's only the component that is having a, a higher stability. Then, the next property that we are having is that these two fluorides, SF4, it's a gaseous component, while SF6, it's a solid at a room temperature. That is a specific characteristic of this compound. Particularly, when we are talking about the halogens, we can it as SCCN, SC2CN2, gas converted itself into SCCN4 plus 3SC. The compound from plus 1 changes to plus 4. The stability remains over there. The remaining the tetrafluoride are very stable compounds. Right? So that is reaction towards the halogen. Right? These are the three specific elements that we are always going to discuss for the particular group. Okay, the next factor that we are having now is a preparation of dioxygen compound. That is going to oxygen. We are going to have it now. Dioxygen. That means, like in our previous lecture for the group number 15, we studied certain elements. Right? Certain are there to be studied and certain are there to be eliminated from our syllabus. Particularly in the group number this 16, we are having it as an oxygen. So we will study about the how to go for the preparation properties and uses of oxygen. Right? First of all. Then later on we will discuss about the certain other things. Right? But today we will discuss about the oxygen. So first of all, preparation. Again, when we are talking about the preparation, the preparation we are going to get it in the two different factors. One is a laboratory method and the second one is a commercial method. Right? Now we know it, commercial when we are discussing about the commercial method. For the commercial method, we will be having it as a fractional distillation of air, like nitrogen gas. Right? We also know that nitrogen is in the largest quantity in the atmosphere, but at the same time, the second most element that is present in the atmosphere in the form of gas is oxygen. Right? So we get it as an oxygen by the fractional distillation. Additional to this, this is the first method. The second method that we are doing here, that is electrolysis of water. This is the again and most important or in the industry it is in the large scale because water, we know that water, three-fourth of the earth's surface is made up of water. 
or it's covering the water. So water is there in a very large quantity and the water is H2O. So electrolysis of water. So what will happen on the water? Anode, when the reaction of electrolysis of the water is carried out at anode, 2 H2O reacts to produce O2, 4 H plus 4 e. oxygen that is obtained on the anode by the electrolysis. So that is also one of the important methods that we are getting it by the electrolysis. Right? So for the compression method we are having two. One is flexural distillation and the other one is electrolysis. Now, this is a point in the last quantity when I want to produce it. But when I want to do it for the small quantity, the laboratory method, in the lab, how we are going to get it? So, the preparation in the lab. What is thermal decomposition? The one of the reactions that we are going to get it as a thermal decomposition. Thermal decomposition of what? We are getting it as an EG2O. It gets converted into EG plus O2. Or we can add it as an H2O2. It gets converted into H2O plus O2. These are easily available components which can be thermal decomposition that is on heating. On heating it, they get decompose themselves and produces oxygen. But the most important or number of times that is being used in the laboratory or in the general case where we are using it in the large format that is by TCLO3. That reaction is carried out by TCLO3. It gets the one thing to TCL plus zero. This is the particular method through which in the laboratory we produce the compound. Now what is this compound known as? Potassium chlorate. Right? Using the potassium chlorate on electrolysis. Or you can say that on heating it. Thermal decomposition. It gets converted into KCL plus O2. Right? So that is the method for preparation. Okay. Next one. We are adding it. That is the properties. Now again the first one. It's a tasteless colorless orderless this. We know it. That is a common property. Colorless this less, orderless this. Second thing, it is soluble in water. We know that oxygen is soluble in water. You can see that aquatic animals or plants, all they are getting their oxygen through dissolved oxygen that is present in the water. Right? So it is soluble in water. They react with metals as well as Non-metals to form respective oxides. They react with metals as well as non-metals to form respective oxides. Right? For that case, if I write it as a reaction, Cu, Cu reacts with O2. It produces Right? We balanced it to Cu plus O2 to Cu. But if I am writing it with Al, with O2, it is going to produce Al to O3, depending upon the balance. We will be having it as an, we need it as an Al to O3. So, 3O2, 2, Al to O3, we will be requiring it as an 4. Right. All these 
reactions that we have sort of seen in it. They are all with metals, right? It also reacts with non-metals also. When we are talking about the reaction with non-metals, what we can see? With non-metals. It reacts with C plus O2, CO2, S plus O2, SO2. We know in that even at Cl, but an axial component is taken, it reacts with O2. It produces uh, 2Cl2, 2H2O. Right? It produces 2Cl2 plus 2H2. This reaction is particularly carried out in presence of the gateway CuCl2. Right? So, these are the problems with metals as well as with non metals. Okay? Is it? Okay. This is what we are having it uh, uses. The last one that we want to do it for the oxygen. And that is the uses. But we know that for breathing, we are taking in the oxygen from the atmosphere for the survival of the life. So oxygen is used everywhere. But additional to that, we know it that for hospital purposes, nowadays for the COVID-19 patients, oxygen supply through the ventilator is becoming very, very important. Right? So in the similar way, those patients who are having it as a lung problem or asthma or maybe under these certain conditions, then oxygen supply is required. So for that oxygen, it's a commercially being prepared and supplied to the hospital. Additional to it, in the laboratories, it has been used. Even oxygen, that is for the oxidation of the different compounds. So we know it. I am not going to discuss about the uses of the oxygen. You know many of them. Right? Okay. Like group number 15 in these also. Rest of the ozone compounds, oxides, types of oxides, all these topics have been eliminated. We are having now straightforward the next topic to be discussed. It's related to the sulfur. But that we will discuss it in our next lecture. Till then, thank you.